How can he be a shaheed? Do you know what he was doing upon the streets? He was selling cocaine. He was selling heroin. He was supplying. He was shutting. Who was he doing that to? He was doing that to the young children of our streets, the young teenagers of our streets. Do you know how many people got bust up because of him? Do you know how many people got, got shot because of him? Do you know how many mothers he made cry at night waiting for their children who are out at night on a high because of that cocaine, because of that heroin. Do you know how many fathers did not know how to sleep at night because they saw their wives crying their eyes out, waiting for their sons to come back home? Do you know how many lives they were destroyed? How many siblings lost their minds thinking, what on earth is he doing on the streets? Why did he just get arrested? Why is he locked up behind bars? Because he was supplying cocaine, because he was supplying heroin, and now suddenly because he's been shot on the streets for the crimes that he was committing against the same people he was doing them with. They shot him down first before he got to them. And you call him a shaheed. Brother, that's not right. Because the Prophet wasallam he said, Al-Qatilu wal maqtulu fin nar the murderer and the murdered will both be in the fire. The Sahaba, the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we know why the murdered will be in the fire. We know why the murderer will be in the fire. But what has the murdered one done? The Prophet said, the one who got murdered, he was eager to kill his brother too. But just that the other one got there before him, had he got to him, he would have killed him too. He wouldn't have stopped back. All of these murders, all of these shootings, machetes on our streets. In the month of Ramadan, just this year, how many shootings did we have? How many murders did we have? We have generations of people in our country, up and down this country, in areas which our parents built upon their hard work and hard earnings. They built beautiful masjids, but in the surroundings of those masjids, we have shutters who are, who are supplying cocaine, who are supplying drugs, who are supplying A-class drugs to children. You think those children are not going to lose their minds? You think those children are going to grow up to be righteous and pious? And then when one of them gets killed, you call him a shaheed? How can you put him in the same line as Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu an? How can we put those people in the same category as those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about in the Quran and said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ والصالحين. Do you know who the shuhada are? They are the people who give up their lives for the sake of Allah. We have to come back to the reality that if we don't live for the sake of Allah, then we shouldn't expect to die for the sake of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَمُوتُونَ عَلَى مَا تَحْيَوْنَ عَلَيْهِ You'll only die in the state that you lived upon. These people, they die, they, sh they are shot down upon the streets like thugs. And then they are picked up and taken to the masjid and they're shrouded and washed and their janazas are prayed and their burials are attended. But do you know at the end of all of that, their mates, what do they go write on their gravestones? Lived as a lion, died as a lion, hero here, hero in the next world. Who the heck are you trying to cheat? Allah? He lived like a lion here. Perhaps, maybe, according to your books, how is he going to live like a lion in the next world? How is it going to be when he stands before Allah? When the sun is right above his head, when people are sweating from head to toe, when people are running from their parents, their siblings, their brothers and sisters, their spouses, and everybody they knew, they're running away from those same people who used to deal, those same people who used to shop, those same people who used to give, supply them drugs. They would run away from them and have nowhere to turn except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, had they had a face to turn to Allah with, perhaps they would have had acceptance. Allah will not send those people to Jannah until people have not forgiven them or they are thrown into the fire and they have taken their punishment for, what they, for the corruption that they did to the lives of people. The lives of mothers, the lives of communities, the lives of siblings, the lives of fathers, the lives of the general public and community. We have areas in Birmingham, in Manchester, in Bradford, where people literally live frightened and scared, thinking that if I step out at night in the evening and even go to the masjid for Isha, I might get shut down. We can deceive the people around us. We can cheat ourselves and cheat the people around us. But we have to remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who is watching. This earth that we tread upon belongs to Allah. We have thugs and gangsters and godfathers and people who think they rule the turf. 
they are the sovereigns of the earth. And they say to people, you come into my postcode, you're dead. You come into my area, I'm going to chop you down. You can't, you can't tread upon my turf. You can't come anywhere close to my area. What's this about? The earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The earth will either give witnessing for you or against you. The earth will either speak of your goods or your evil. If you behave like this upon the earth, the earth that belongs to Allah, don't walk upon the earth as if you are God. The Prophet Isa alayhi salam, he used to say to people, he said, don't walk upon the earth as if you are God. We have people walking upon the streets now and they deem themselves to be the rulers of these lands, the rulers of these streets, that nobody can come into these streets and into these areas, into these postcodes, except with their permission. Who are they? Where did they start from? What was their beginning? And what's going to be their end? They have to realize that their beginning was a drop of sperm and their end will be in a grave covered with earth, covered with dirt, and they'll have nobody. Will they go down there and say to anybody, don't come upon my turf, don't come upon my earth? No, if you can't say it down there, then Allah has not given anybody the permission to block anybody from any area, from any land. And also, these people, they go around with such arrogance. If they meet somebody who they don't want in their areas, and that person looks at them, they say to the person, put your eyes down. Don't look at me in my face. A'udhu Billah. Arrogance to this extent that they make people their slaves and they want people to be servants to them, sub submissive to them. Whereas our submission is to the creator of the heavens and the earth. They forget that when Allah puts them into trouble, when Allah puts corners them and they have no way out, who are they going to say to them, this is my turf, this is my land.